Welcome back. My name is Casey Ferris. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve here on YouTube. Today we're talking about five more fusion concepts that are essential for making awesome stuff inside of Fusion. The last video that I posted about the basic concepts that you need to kind of wrap your head around did so well that I said, you know what? Maybe we could do for another dose of that. Maybe we could. So here we are, dosing. <laughs> we are. Here I have a little composite, which just happens to illustrate a lot of the things that I want to talk about. So if you don't understand everything that's going on, that's really, that's okay. That's okay. Cause we're gonna take this one little bit at a time. First of our new group of big concepts is that some nodes need a render node for you to actually use them. There are certain types of nodes inside a fusion that you can't connect directly to a merge, let's say. For instance, this text 3D, if we break this, we can't merge this over anything. It doesn't really work. We can't really run through things through text. And so you're gonna like, what, what does that do? Well, this text 3D, at minimum, needs a node called render 3D. So if I take this and pipe it into my render 3D, here we have our 3D text being rendered to the screen, merged over everything else. And what we can do if we wanna add more things to our 3D scene is put everything inside of merge 3D and then take the merge 3D and put that into renderer. Merge 3D, again, cannot connect to any 2D node. Same thing for any lights or really any 3D thing. They have to go through a renderer before they get merged. The renderer controls what everything looks like and kind of some of the options for the quality and stuff like that. So that's why that needs to be there. So if you're confused about why the heck you can't connect certain things to certain things, well, maybe it might need a renderer. The things that need that are anything that's 3D, also shapes like S ellipse. Again, you can't put over things. You need to do a S render, which is short for shape render in order to actually use it on things. Same thing goes for particles. That's why we have these three little buttons here, P emitter, merge, and render. You can't connect merge to anything. You can't connect emitter to anything. You have to connect the render to your 2D nodes. Okay, okay. That was a big confusing thing for me for quite a while. The next concept that I think is really important to understand are masks versus mats. When to use them, what the differences are. We could probably do a whole video on this, but in short, a mask is a shape that you draw and I can just hit one on the keyboard to bring this up. And this will limit where things happen. So whatever node that you're using, like let's say some fast noise, if we were to attach an ellipse mask to our fast noise, bring this up in the second viewer, the noise is just rendered inside of that circle. So a mask is generally a shape that you would draw directly on something or you would apply to limit something. A mat is sort of like that. In fact, a, a mask really is kind of making a mat. If we look here on the left viewer, this is our lips mask viewed as a mat. A mat is just a grayscale image that shows what parts of the image should be at 100% and what parts should be at 0%. So 100 is white and zero is black. So a mask can attach directly to something, but it can also be used as a mat with its black and white image. The image that a mask puts out is just this black and white image. So you can use that for something that you'd use a mat for. Let's take a look at an example of a mat. Here we have this little time-lapse video of these clouds going by. We're looking up at these buildings. And let's say we want to just adjust this sky and all the reflections in the building without affecting all of the colors in the image. Well, we could go through and draw a mask around every single window until we have this selected, but that would be just about the worst possible thing ever. So instead, what we like to do sometimes is make a mat. And a mat just takes an image and oftentimes you can just adjust the brightness and contrast like I did with the curves here and make a really high contrast image that's dark where you don't want things to happen and bright white where you want things to happen. So all I've done is taken the curves and just really pump up the contrast here so that we have solid white on the sky, we have white on the windows, and any place that you wouldn't really see the sky or the reflection of the sky is going to be black. So now I can do something like apply this to my blue background here. And by default, it wouldn't really do a whole lot. If you connect curves to a mask, it's not going to do anything because generally if you connect something to a mask input, it's going to look for something like, you know, an actual mask, which not only makes a black and white image, but it also has transparency because it's just a circle shape all over nothing. And so it will look at the transparency and use that as a mask by default. But if you select whatever you're trying to apply your mat to and you go over to the inspector under this third tab settings, you can adjust how this mask channel is treated. And if we're feeding a black and white image to this, we can select channel right here. 
and go down to luminance. And now it will make anything that's black in that mat transparent and it will keep anything that's white in the mat opaque. And so now we can just overlay this blue on top of everything. I have this running through a merge with a soft light mode right here. And it kind of makes the sky a little bit more blue. So here's before and here's after. And it's just applying to the sky and the reflection of the sky up here in this red building. If we turn this off and on, it's only applying in the reflections. So this is a really great way to do some pretty advanced detailed stuff without a whole lot of work. If you want to learn more about mats and masks, again, this could be a huge video. So please let me know if you want a video about that. Next, let's talk about just more of a big general concept inside of Fusion, which is there are lots of ways to do each thing. For instance, let's say we wanted to put some text over everything here. We could pipe this into a merge and let's type some text. <laughs> some text. Let's go. If I want to make this text bigger, really the only way that is good for me to do this is the size inside of the text generator, because this is actually increasing the font size. And if I make it really big, it's still going to be nice and clean. There aren't going to be any jaggies or anything. But let's say I want to rotate this. I can rotate it within the text node if I want to, just by grabbing this handle. I can also grab the merge and rotate it kind of the same way in the merge. And I could even make a transform node between the text and the merge, shift spacebar, and then type XF. That'll bring up the transform node. And with the transform node selected, I could also rotate it just like this. So what the heck is the right answer? If there are so many different ways to do something, most of the time, I would say a lot of the time, it probably doesn't matter for something like this. It's more dependent on, do you want a transformation or whatever you're doing to happen at a certain time in the chain. So do we want to make some text and then rotate it and then merge it? Do we want to make some rotated text and then merge it? Do we want to make some text and merge it and then rotate it? <laughs> That's going to be kind of dependent on what you're really doing. So let's say I wanted to have a bunch of different copies of this text. It might be something where I'd like to output this to a couple different merge nodes. I could take each merge node and move these around just in the transform settings of the merge node and then rotate them all individually, right? And that might be something that I want to do for my comp. If I want them all to definitely have the same rotation, I can rotate them within the text node and I can have them all have the exact same rotation. It just really depends on what you're after. And it's unique to whatever situation you are creating. So don't be scared that there are multiple different ways to do it. Just know that you do have options, especially like this, that kind of depend on, do you want to rotate the text itself or do you want to rotate each instance of the text? Next concept that has been kind of annoying to learn is that sometimes an effect will affect everything in the image when it should really just be affecting like one part of it. And so there's a little trick to kind of get around this. For instance, let's say I want to color correct this text. You'd think that I could grab a color corrector node and put it in between my text and my merge five, grab the color corrector. And if I do something like push the lift down, that it would make the text darker, but it affects everything. This is one of those things that on some nodes, if you run it through an effect, it just affects everything instead of using the transparency. And so what you have to do is select whatever node is doing this, go over to the inspector, and there should be somewhere in there under the color corrector, it's under options. There should be a option for pre-divide post multiply. And look what happens when I click this. It uses the transparency from that node that I have connected to the color corrector instead of just doing everything. So if you're having trouble with that, definitely click that little button that will save you so much headache. Oh boy. Last but not least, the final concept inside of Fusion is expressions. Expressions are helpful. And most of the time, they're not that hard. Let's say I want to add some fog here. I just have my fast noise over everything else. And let's say I want that fast noise to kind of move from right to left. Well, I could start at the beginning of my comp and keyframe my center here. I'll click a keyframe and then go to the end of the comp and move a keyframe over here. And that would totally work. When I play this back, the fog goes from right to left. But let's say I want this to be faster or slower. Well, I have to go to the end keyframe and move this over to be faster, move it this way to be slower. And that works OK. But let's say that I actually want to make this comp a little bit longer. I would have to not only extend the comp and everything, but I would have to re keyframe this. 
Well, I'll show you a simple little expression that will just help kind of do this keyframing without us actually having to add any keyframes. So I'll just undo a couple of keyframes here. And over here in the inspector, under center, whatever I want to add an expression to, you can select this and hit equals and then type in whatever expression I want. Now, this is a simple expression called time. Time just gives the current frame count right here. So that would be 119. And then what I'm gonna do is just say divide by minus 75, which I happen to know from messing around with this is about the right speed and everything to animate our fog going right to left. And now what that's doing is every frame driving this animation with that expression. It wasn't that bad, right? I don't even really have to know what all this means. If I wanna reset it, I could just remove the expression, select this and hit equals. I could just do time. That's gonna move everything a lot faster, way too fast. But there's a lot of little tricks like that to where it's not very hard, but it'll save you a lot of headaches animating things. If you just need something to simply move left and right forever, this is a great way to do it. I hope that this tutorial was a great expression of your time. <laughs> oh boy, that was really something, wasn't it? Wasn't it building? You, you know, don't think you don't know, cause you do. Look at you, you're all foggy, you got a blue sky. We did all kinds of good things. Look, we even have, we now have some text to go over you. Aren't you lucky building? Aren't you lucky? <laughs> I forgot that the fog was way too, way too speedy.